call the meeting of the Clinton County Board of Education September 2014 meeting to order. Uh, second item on the agenda is a prayer. We'd like to ask Brother Ray Wood to please pray. Have us pray. Father, we our gracious and divine heavenly Father, we come to thy throne of grace and of mercy to offer thee our thanksgiving for the blessings of our lives. Our Father, we're thankful for this coming together this evening to make plans and decisions that will affect the learning process of our young people in this county. We pray that you would bless them and bless the schools throughout the county as they labor to help these young people prepare for tomorrow. Be with each one of us, continue to love us and bless us, continue to watch over and care for us. Give us peace through this night, forgive our sins in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Next time is the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. We have a Palmer Elementary student, Abby Parker. She will be here tonight. Let me present this to you, Abby, as token of our appreciation for your coming tonight to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, okay? All right, let's, let's go. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. nominations for vice chairman. Mr. Chairman, I nominate Gary Don Melton as vice chairman. I second. I have a motion by Mr. Meadows, a second by Ms. Lane, Mr. Gary Don Melton. Hey, uh, Casey's coming in the door. She just takes me. She's the way on her. Yeah, I'm not.
so she just takes me back and says she goes, yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She, she, she just says she's hurt. I'm hurt. <laughs> we can go ahead with that. That ain't no big deal. Go ahead. Oh, ready? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. James Cooper? Yes. Robert Foster? Yes. Paul Gallagher? Yes. Isaac Meadows? Yes. Carrie Donnell? Yes. Jane Lane? Yes. Kim Spicer? Yes. Michael Yates? Yes. yes. Next item is to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to do a consent agenda. And uh, Ms. Lane, uh, you probably haven't done this before, but what it is, we combine some of the stuff we have on here. It's kind of cut and dry. We don't have, have to have a lot of discussion. And we went over a lot of it Monday night. It's kind of it's made to speed up the board meeting is what it's kind of helps to do and everything. But if you have any questions on any of them, We'll table it and come back to it in the record part of the meeting. Anyway, you want to do that. Okay. I would like to do uh, number A, Director Strategic Plan. B, School Nutrition Program Update. C, Coordinator of School Health Update. D, Attendant Supervisor Update. C, Tracy City Elementary Strategic Improvement Plan. J, retainer agreement for Scott Bennett, K, minivan bid, and L, playhouse bid. I've that one, one question I got about the uh, retainer. And, and David, I'm assuming you, you talked with him. Um, the last I talked with him, my opinion was we need to look back though. I think we've had him for home for about two or three years now. We need to take an average what that was what number did he finally come up with 2500 2500 what he come up with. did you did you talk to him about that i have um there's a looking package right there yeah but you, you did you that. talk to him about the average of i didn't talk to him about the average no okay. i did not all right well, i'm fine with 25 but i think next year for sure we need to tell him that we like to he'd see his number closer to the average I have a motion to approve the agenda with uh, consent items listed. Second. Motion and second. Motion by Mr. Gallagher to approve the agenda with the consent items. <coughs> second by Mr. Meadows. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item approved minutes of August 14th, 2014 meeting. Motion we approve the minutes. Motion by Mr. Melton. Second. Second by Mr. Foster. All in favor of approving the minutes say aye. Aye. Uh, Any recognition or awards? I'd like to just uh, recognize Mr. Foster for the, the last two years he's been chairman. Me being a new board member, he taught me a whole lot. He's done a yes, great job. He's, uh, he's worked with everybody on this board. He's kept us all informed. And just I'm very grateful for the job he's done the last two years serving this school system, this board. I'd like to give him a round of applause. We have any committee reports? One. Bill of the committee. Uh, Shirley called, uh, you know, we've got a, a pecking list of our coal mines, got about 20 something items on it. He called Chasler. Chasler had asked a month ago if we would wait until Everett could come back because he was the super on the job when it was done. And I thought that was the right thing to do. Well, I, I, we don't know for sure how many weeks this is going to be. He's going to come, but we don't know exactly when. But to, to offset that, Pat Newhall has called Dr. Dickerson and requested a meeting that he wants to talk to him about something. And I'm just going to have to slide in that meeting and see if I can expedite this deal with Chad to get that list to occur. 
Can you can you email me what's on the list? I'll have to get from Jeff Shelby, but I can't hear it. One thing on I don't does this fall under the building committee as well? No. No, that's uh, a that'll be item. That'll be item uh yeah, A1. Uh Mr. Chairman, I noticed that we approved the minutes of the last meeting. We've got the uniform bid thing on there and we approved the June first. And I think we've got some distractions here about that. So we need to take them out of that some way or another before we approve it. Can we do that through a motion? Well, I don't know if we can do it. We're approving that they got it. Uh same way they they changed the terms of it. Yeah. I think we're okay leaving it in the minute because it, we the bill we approved, they've now since come back and change what we're trying to do. Okay. I think as long as it's recorded and what we take action on tonight, we should be fine there. Okay, that's fine. Okay, on to unfinished business. Uh, item A is the proposed director of schools annual evaluation form. That was a form that was in our packet. And uh, it's, this form's quite a bit less wordy than one we approved a year ago to, to do the director on our, to do the evaluation on the director of schools. So that could be done in December and May of each year per director's contract. All right now, do we need to turn these in at the May meeting? Yeah, the December meeting. And no, the I May mean, I just look at the December meeting. Oh, right. good point. Right. And actually, I think we should have a, we'll probably have a special workshop and advertise it. And the only item on the agenda will be the director's evaluation. We need to turn these in to see the number board meeting, correct? Do you have a motion to accept the new form? Make a motion to accept the new form. I say. Motion by Mr. Melton, second by Mr. Yates to accept the new director's <coughs> school evaluation form. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Item A1 is the Miracle on the Mountain playground project. Now, I know everyone's had a, had a lot of discussion, a lot of phone calls since our workshop Monday night when Mr. Nunn came and gave us a presentation. Um, yeah, but I think we need to table this until all sides have had a chance to, to get together and talk about it and see what the miracle on the mountain, what they're wanting and what the, uh, there's enough, looks to me like there's plenty of property out there for both activities. They may have have to shift it around a little bit, but I think it would be a good idea for for everybody to just sit around the table. And they have a board of directors already set up. Mm -hmm. Their board of directors, our board, and then Farm Bureau conglomerate, however many y'all want to bring. And let's just sit down somewhere in the library in here somewhere and get that map out. And let's just talk this thing over. The woman comes up. I second the motion. We've got a motion to table the Miracle on the Mountain project. I second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, the last uh, item on unfinished business is the Big Eight basketball schedule. Everybody, has everybody got a problem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I just met with them and we went through and they looked. About trying to revamp the schedule to avoid Thursday night. But as far as the athletic community and the Big Eight community, we went through it. You've already got 56 on Saturday. Plus, if you if you go to plan on Saturday, you're going to make the principal be working six days a week. With the mandatory, they have been. Uh, with the high school plan um, and different things, this is right now, as of now, still, we still probably be some tweaking to it according to St. Andrews. But as of right now, this is the best scenario that we came up with to yes. get it done on the full baseball. And then our, our goal is to play East, 14, play, four, twice. play 14 games, right? Yeah, okay. okay. it plays everybody twice. And uh, is there any reason why we can't start the last week in October like we're starting right here? I don't know if it's 25th or 28th and end in, uh, on Valentine's Day. Well, the time to do that, you put a 
weekend for makeup, and then you got the big eight tournament after that. Baseball, you're well into baseball. No, no. Well, I, actually, you don't. Uh, first baseball game is on is on April first. So you end mid mid February. That's a week first last week in October. Play one game a week, which is Monday Tuesday. If you need to have a makeup game, you could schedule those on Thursday in there if you needed to. But you also have the TNT State tournament as long as you can't play. And, 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 I, and I agree. Uh, one of the things that I, one of the things that uh, the input I got is that we have, you know, but, you know, I don't know how long it's been this way. But we play so many games a week, sometimes two or three game, games a week. During the schools, during the actual season, we're playing more games, we're practicing, so the opportunity to get better throughout the year is less from playing so many games a week. So whenever it comes time to actually go play the TNT, we're not able to compete on the level that we once was. And also, uh, I, I don't know, I know I hear academics talk about, and that's pretty obvious, you know, as far as that goes, but uh, to me, looking at purely from, that, from, the academic, from the athletic standpoint, I feel like we are better serving our kids to play one day a week. That gives them an the opportunity to practice two or three days a week if they want to and get better as the season goes instead of trying to bang, bang, Monday, Tuesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Like baseball, football, and all these that play on these same night. I don't, I don't know that football plays on the same night. They play in they play 10 you never know. But, but not, not during the, not during the basketball season they don't play. They, their last game. What's the difference in basketball playing Thursday and middle school football playing Thursday? I, I didn't. I didn't say anything about Thursday. I said uh, one game a week is the only thing I said. Is from the from the athletic standpoint, that was that's just my. And, I, and as far as the way everybody votes, I'm not saying I'm saying that to sway the vote. I feel like that we need to have the basketball in the kids' hands October first, no later than October first. We need to be playing the first week or last week in, in October. And uh, try to schedule the games on Mondays and Tuesdays only. And, and as far as a make it game goes, or something like that, we can have we can play on a, a different day other than that. Uh, Are you going to cut their down so they just play everybody at one time? No, it's, you got that's 15 weeks. That's 15 weeks right there. You should. Space it out and begin October and then what was the Valentine's Day? Yeah. And that's still get the kids a chance. That's that's 15 to 16 weeks. Mike, when are they going to Um. When are they going on? We're in the barn last year in February. In February. In, in the February, that's right. That gives you a two week buffer before baseball ever actually starts core practice. And their first, baseball's first game is in, uh, is in uh, April. I feel like the alternative is having it out and playing one game where they space it out, it's a win for everybody. The reason that they've always, one of the reasons they've always tried to get over two is right there in February, you've got all the high school district tournaments. They've always worked this around the high school where they can be. That's something you, I mean, you, name is Big Eight coach, and it wants it. I, I, can, I can ask the high school coaches. I just, I just don't see a lot of high school presence at the, uh, at the uh, elementary school game. Well, we've got to have two tournaments. You've got to have the King's Bell tournament, you got to have the Big Eight tournament. What, what are the you saying is wrong with this, this schedule? Is, I'm sorry? What are you saying is, is wrong with this schedule? I, I'm, not, I, I don't, I'm not saying, I'm just saying a better alternative, in my opinion, is to try to have, try to start the last week in October, go through Valentine's Day, and with the goal in mind, playing Mondays and Tuesdays primarily, you can fit in a second game if, you, if I had to situation. Or to make a game, things like that, <clears throat> and then roll into it. Well, this schedule looks like it starts October 28th and winds up January 15th. And then you have the big eight tournament start at January 24th. Yeah, well, you got you got two or three games a week. Two games a week. But and does this include fifth and sixth grade as well? No, they don't matter. No. That's what I'm saying. So you got parents that are going for two, three games a week. And you can't, you know, you can't leave your kid at home. So if you got more than one kid, you're going to two and three games a week every week. Three games a week, essentially, if you got more than one kid. Was, was there a lot of, uh, I, I didn't get any calls from parents, uh, but was there a lot of upset parents about big A playing on Saturday? I got there about, wasn't my school. I got about four. 
Oh, well, just the reason I asked is because, like y'all just said, I mean, fifth and sixth have been playing on Saturday. They're playing anyway. Well, we played the big eight tournament and put it on Saturday and went to fifth and sixth. Well, you, you don't have you don't if you if you start in, in October and you finish in February, you don't have to play, play on any Saturday. You play on the end of the week. And if you want to play two, you could. Monday and Tuesday, you got two days in there. Uh, of course, you can move it to a Thursday or Saturday, whichever. If you had to, but you got you got 16 and 17 weeks to, uh, to play that. I think the decision is pretty much to move on the state of the schedule and say we're not going to play on Thursday and then we get to play one game, or do we want to space it out where they can play two games like we always had with the big eight? Because I, I, I don't want to say the big eight go. No, the big eight to the kids is it's bigger than the state. I mean, the big That's eight right. is. It's a really big deal for these kids, and it needs to stay. Usually, on the team to go for school, get the the first and second place team will usually go for team. But they but they hadn't done any good in the last ten or so years since we've been playing the two no, three games. No, no. Last time we won it. Well, if we're trying to start in October, pretty stuff out. Valentine's Day. I make a motion we adopt this schedule because it does exactly that. No, it no. When does when it starts October? October. October. When does middle school football? It ends October the twenty third. Then that's that's the bowl game. October twenty third. Does this not start? Say? 28th of October yeah. and ends the January 15th. 31st of November. Mm -hmm. Or 31st of January. Right. At the end of the day. So one night a week, you'll be just on Thursday night for studying the test. That's right. That's what it's. Grades up and everything else. Looking at the kids first, sports second. The schedule that you're looking at right there is two nights a week. It's not one night a week. Yeah, that's that's nice. hard. Nice. Nice. You know what I mean? As far as our scores, we have plenty of stuff. 27-3 is need for them. I agree with that. Right, we're going to make, I mean, we can so we're going to quit playing middle school I baseball on school. Thursday night. No, I don't, I mean, I don't know that middle school baseball is a conflict here. I thought well, middle school baseball well, starts now. in Listen to what Paul's saying. I mean, that's we go. He don't want no Thursday night sports that because what, we that, test on Friday. That's not what he said. That's not what. That's not what any parents. Is, I've heard any parents say anything about baseball having a problem. I've not heard anything. Well, if they're going to test in the fall you know, on Friday, they're going to test in the spring on Friday. Get it on. As far as middle school baseball, do y'all play during the day or night? How do y'all do? We play. We play at night. We play. At, most times start at five o'clock. And with this kids, we just moved the times up to 5.30. These kids would be home by 7.30, 8 o'clock. We're in middle school, get home from 9 or 10. And that's something I think like three nights a week. Uh, as far as baseball, right? Yeah. Let's talk about basketball, I think. But how do you do the one another? You can't separate it. I'm thinking, too, we have control over the elementary. This system does. That's we right. We have control over the thing. Squatch County, Pike, going That's on. right. We have no control over that. That's we right. don't have control over our elementary program. That's here. right. And that's what I'm getting at. Because no law in the state of Tennessee, I've gone for 20 years, and says we have to play each team eight times or nine times or whatever. But when these test scores come down, the state comes in here and takes over the school system, we're in trouble. And so which one are you going to put first? We can't look at just one school. We've had Tracy's dad, and I think that's our fault. We've I had think three so. separate principals at Tracy's school in the last three years, and you can't get a principal in our state. That's and that's right. our fault. And we can't punish these kids and take away their big age. Oh, well, yeah. We cannot help the principal speak to the fire of the teacher. So I think, I, so I personally think. The don't take the test. The students take the test. The, the, principals, are there, the principals are there to make sure that the teachers do their job. And if we don't have a secure environment, then and there's no sense in punishing the kids because we failed to put a principal that's going to stay and take care of the kids. We're not kids. punishing the kids. They're still getting the fire off. Anyway, but, 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 Paul, but, Paul, but Paul, but Paul, but doesn't the, the, the starting in October, finishing in, finishing the last, uh, the, uh, by Valentine's Day that week, that gives us 17 weeks to get our big eight games in to play every team twice, that make up games you want to, 
and we're not we don't have as I don't we're not saying we have hard data that is facts and academics. I'm looking at it purely from the sports standpoint. This How many is the best. Leagues, there no school we can't run. This, and as what the high school coaches told me, they felt like it would be better if the kids were practicing more through the week instead of playing every uh, every other night and not getting not in, not improving. As far no, as I know, that's a good argument. That, I mean, that's that just, is a good I argument. I just listen to the people in my district. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's a good argument. They're all, they're all saying that all we're doing for Big Eight is just, is not improving throughout the year. We're just playing games. Just, just playing games. If we spread it out like Gary Dorman has suggested, then it's a win-win. We play one game a week. Yeah. We just what half of us want, and then the kids get keeper Big Eight. Yeah. Big Eight. You don't do this if you don't do this when I ask you to give the people in the big A conference time to something say instead of just telling them what they're going to do. Well we've done that and if this is what we've got. I mean it's an option. We've, we've got a motion to accept what the big A said. And then we'd have a motion, or we've not got a motion, but we have we got a lot of discussion about stretching it out. Well I think everybody still I'll, plays everybody, I'll, all the schools get the same gates. I'll go ahead and make the motion that the last we start, we put the basketball in the, in the kids' hands October the 1st. We start our first week of games the last week in October. We end our last week of games in the second week in February. And when is the big eight term? It, it'd be the like it'd be the after the regular season. It's the it's always right it's always right after the regular season. Uh, now you're talking about ending on Valentine's Day. You're talking about ending regular season. Yeah, that's right. Tournament the next week, or well, you could have, you could start the tournament that weekend on Saturday if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, you could. I ain't looked at the calendar. I mean, that's just the way. Well, it would. No, I'm looking at last year. It would be on Friday. You would start the tournament on Friday. Valentine's Day should be on uh, Thursday next year. Yeah, no, it would be on Saturday. So, yeah, so you, Saturday. so you would start the, you would start it on the 16th. Yeah. That gives you plenty of time before baseball, and baseball is the last last week of February. <clears throat> All right. and, and I'm not saying pick the schedule, who plays what and when. I'm just saying that's what I, I'm going to make the motion, because that's representative from, from the athletic standpoint. And like Paul said, there's probably some academic advantages to it, too. So we have a motion by Mr. Melton to start. Big eight practice October one and in the season regular season. Uh, before they start practicing with the ball. Right. Start practicing with the ball. I think they practice they practice all year long as far as the ball. They need about two, three weeks to you may want to say for that? I have a second by Miss Anderson. And uh, of course, we've got a lot of discussion on that, so we'll just go ahead and just make some little roll call. And this time, for two years, me and Yates have always got to go last, so let's go reverse. We'll start at the bottom of the alphabet and we'll go first. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah, the motion is to uh, start practice with the ball in hand October 1 for the Big 8 season, and then the season, the regular season, will end February 14th. We'll start there. Yeah. Started last week October in the uh, you know, Valentine's Day, the week of Valentine's Day. Uh, How many days did it take us to do the Big Eight tournament? I think a week. As long as we in that barn the last week of February, I'll vote you. You're good. <laughs> You're good. I, I, I'm just looking at it from the athletic standpoint. That's, that's the basis of my motion. This keeps kids continuously working through and playing year round. Tim Spot. Yes. yes. Jane Lane. Yes. Gary Donnell. Yes. Master Bell. Yes. Paul Gallagher. Yes. Robert Foster. Yes. James Cooper. No. Casey Hand. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we, uh, we consented to the first few items under new business. And since we got uh, some bus drivers here, just want to make it clear that since the consent was approved, what we're going to do as far as the alternative school children is uh, we're going to leave the policy as is, which is if a kid is 
since alternative school, they will not be provided bus service. So you all won't have to uh, worry about the alternative school children being on your buses. And uh, we, uh, we talked about that. We greatly appreciate the job you all do. You have a hard, very hard job, a very demanding job. And we want to make that as easy on you all as we can. So just wanted to make sure you all were clear about that. The first item is the uh, item G now, the uniform bids. Director, Mr. Melton, wasn't here for the night. You want to explain what's going on with the uniform bids? Yes, sir. At the, the last meeting, uh, bids were accepted for uniforms, and uh, then Mr. Moon checked with them what, and then in addition, we just wanted it for one year, basically. Mr. Moon did check with that, and no one was really, uh, or universe was not really uh, wanting to honor that for a one year deal. They want at least a three year deal to honor that price, which was not in the bid. Uh, so, so, they would not agree to do that for one year at that price. So, the discussion was somewhat what should we do with that? And I think uh, Mr. Foster has also uh, done some checking on this. Mm -hmm. and I, I talked with our attorney, uh, Scott Bennett. He said basically that we could force their hand and make them honor their bid. But he said, actually, it would cost us more than what it would be worth. So he suggested that we rebid it and either specify a one year or three year contract. Well, with them saying they can't make money in one year, and three years they're going to lose kind of money. Extending, extending the period is not going to make them make any more money. So that's a foolish argument. Yeah, I think what, what the argument is or what the concern is, they put the money in the uniforms and in the name tags and things like that. Is what it would take them three years to money. recoup their money, or they want to make money, or recoup their expenses. Right the, uh, the understanding was that uh, it takes 11 months for them to recoup the money they invested. Uh, 12 months a month they start to see any profit. That being said, uh, every 18 months they will replace all our some repairs, some replacements, but uh, they guarantee that every 18 months they would replace everything. Is that in the contract, Rick? That would be the third contract. Uh, 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 I got to talk with the university and he sent a letter uh, stating that they would honor their business and they gave us three years of prospect. Service is fine, but the product is not. And one of the other companies, they 
you know, what I was doing from other people that's using them, and they are on the state bid. Uh, they're placed for sure. So, so, I mean, so, the, so the price that they're giving us, they're saying that's a three year contract. They will lock that in for three years. And it's better than the air market. It is $450 a year better right now. I, and I think that must be better than what we've had in the past. I mean, obviously, we got the opportunity here so to say. So far, we've been able to cut uh, $1,000 a year off of our uniform price. We just did some changes that we made. Uh, this will be an additional 450 So we That's good. $1,500 a year. Total savings uh, in the last few years. Mr. Foster, did the attorney advise you the best action to take on this is just rebid? He, he indicated that we could force him into honoring his bid. He said, but should he budget, it, it would cost us more than it would be worth. You know, so he, that's where he came in to just rebid it and specify whether we want one year or a three year bid. We well, it don't. It don't sound like. Yeah, we can, we can specify anything we want to. It sounds like we don't have a choice. They're going to go on a three-year when we want to run. That's going to be the deal. If we rebid it and the price goes up, then we lose it anyway. Yeah. Well, they had just said if they had to rebid it, they're not guaranteed to surprise us right now. Both companies did state that if if our market did state this, that if they had to bid, it'd be new clothes in the same way and start from scratch the way you were doing the table. The only thing that's safe for them, they're already. So you guys would have new uniforms we'd save $450 a year. At rate team months we can use. But we would start, yes. We, we start, start with new first, uniforms. We would start with new clothing. They would, and in 18 months they would read. Has Airmark ever given us, given us new uniforms across the board? They have, but it's basically I mean, it's you get a couple of fire pants this week, and six months later you might get a couple of shirts, but they never came in and just reload anybody. What they, what they do, they will charge for main tags and all that. Is there a legal reason that we cannot honor through your contract? Anything state, federal, whatever? Because then we have to go on your contract? No. I'll make a motion we go with you first and then give them through your contract based on the savings and the fact that they can give us your uniform for 18 months. Better. And the fact that the service from Aramark and their quality is the best pool. Recommendation. I mean, I hate to go against your point of your most favorable manager, you know. 
Well, say we were getting kind of backwards here. We're having a motion, then we're discussing it, and then we're getting a second. So, you know, you really should discuss it if you get a second. Just because you second, don't mean you got to vote for it. Right. You know, so right now, if we, we talk about it, and we ain't got a second in the motion. But, uh, the heck with that, I just always try. I make a motion we accept Mr. Boone's uh, recommendation. Second. Got a motion by Mr. Melton, and second by Mr. Melton to accept Mr. Moon's recommendation to rebid the uniform contract. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Three year, three year contract and 18 months in uniforms. We'll start out new. Yeah, start out new and after 18 months a new contract. Yep. One has to be in a proposal. Yeah, and Mr. Moon take care of that. Okay. Before the next item, I'm going to pass this sheet around. It's got the uh, committees on there, whatever committees you would be interested in and sitting on. If you'll just put your name down. I'll give you those out at the next, uh, next board meeting. Next item is the archery program. We had some discussion about when we approved that several months back, the board did. We approved it with uh, understanding we were going to buy one of the archery kits for each school. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dickerson had some conversation with one of our employees that was helping with that and uh, you want to explain your recommendation about it? Uh, yes, what we talked about at workshop uh, was that instead of getting every school a complete set, since some of our PE teachers rotate anyway to different schools, basically you and the high school, of course high school has a, a two PE teachers, uh, but to purchase approximately three uh, for the entire system and let the elementary uh, PE teachers go to their different schools and do that. Yeah. Except Tracy, Tracy does have one PE teacher. So basically three kids can be rotated in the school with the provision that each school would have a net, and the net is what uh, helps stop the air. And we take the, the additional money that we would be spending, uh, how much is that? It's approximately 3000 per uh, school or per kit. So how many kids would we not be or will we not be purchasing? Well, not the person forward to get through. So $12,000. Yeah, but as far as being in the budget, I don't know anything. Uh, there's a line just for that. For the savings, I don't know that we can save. You know, right here's the line where, where the RGB is. The plan was to take it out of the money we budgeted from the board, school boards. Uh, yeah. Just for the miscellaneous expenses. So this would be 9000 instead of, uh, well, instead of twenty one. Get one thousand, approximately one thousand back from the state on each kid and person. So six thousand dollars for the six instead of fourteen. Right. I'm I make the motion. We got. I'm all over that. We make the motion. We accept Dr. Dickerson's recommendation. Second. Motion. motion by Mr. Melton. Second by Mr. Meadows to accept the director's recommendation to purchase three archery kits for the school system. All in favor say aye. Does that include the nets? You got to have nets for the school. Right? Yeah. Is that part of the recommendation? The recommendation is to, to get net, netting for each school. Okay. Motion carries. Does anybody know what kind of chips are on these errors that we're bouncing out of our team for? I bet it's not no, the I subject you, of. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I bet it's not the subject of. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's not the range of the lady. Yeah, I don't know three inch hole in here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the last item on the agenda. Now it's a GCA. Oh, I'm sorry. Were we going to discuss that resolution about the table? Yeah, we, we won't have to take action on it, but we, uh, Mr. Foster talked to the school board attorney about drawing up the resolution. We talked at the workshop about uh, paying the principal payment on the Colmont School Project this year. Not entering into any long-term agreement with the county commission, just this year in May, making the payment on the principal as opposed to the interest. And uh, the attorney suggested that we that we get a something in writing, making sure that those buildings are dated to us for the Board of Education instead of the in the county prior to us committing to pay for anything. And I spoke to Ms. Van Hoos at the courthouse this morning and it was indeed in the Board of Education's name. And the director has a copy. Is, is everyone in the building in our name? Well, she sent me this afternoon. The rest of them, I've not had a chance to go through them, but tomorrow we'll have an answer on that. 
But well, I guess we need to take action officially. We, we, the commission's in agreement. They're appreciative of the fact that we're willing to pay the principal this year and then revisit it in January when we start the 15-16 budget. What's the principal amount? Well, that's for a long time. Can we as a, a, a budget committee meet and talk about that before we do that? There's several angles in which we'll have to approach that budget wise. And I feel like well, we need to uh, look at our existing budget and see what money we didn't uh, appropriate this, this budget and try to uh, get those ducks in the row before we. Actually, they've done got it all cleared up for Oh, the county commission? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good, but I don't believe that. <laughs> what, we, what we decided the other night at the workshop was we budgeted 32000 for the interest in this year's budget. So we got that. Since we're going to pay the interest, and we're not. So there's 32000 Then we're going to use what amount was our surplus from last year's budget year. Yeah. And then the rest is going to come out of the fund balance. Yeah, but I... Because this is just a one-term payment. This is a one-time payment. This isn't an annual agreement that we got with them. We won't, we're both going to revisit what we're going to do in January. See what we're both at in our budget. Well, really, if I, but the county commission should have been having this discussion with us six months ago. They haven't got their budget uh, yet. Okay, so, so this is to help them finish their budget. Right. Because the problem is, but, if but, they don't approve our budget next week. And, and, and that's okay. And so, what, and so what we can do as a budget committee, we can still meet how much right. um, actually comes out of fund balance. Absolutely. We've got to pay to figure out how we're going to tackle it, but the bottom line is we'll okay. agree to pay the yeah, now, Did they not say that they had already made one payment for us? Yes, last year. Last last year. Or well, this past May. This, this past May, they, they made a $240,000 payment. Right. So this is, this is payment two to 10 years, so. So it was kind of getting around if we should fill in on that first payment. <laughs> and that was in May. We can't go back to right. That's fine with me. I, I don't have a problem with it. As long as, long as we're not specifically uh, allocating which, where the funds are going to come from, right now, right. we not should be able to pick 100, 150,000 out of our budget here between now and Christmas. We just need a motion agreeing to pay the principal in May of 2015. We just want to make sure that. People shut our school system down. Come October first, kids are without teachers. You know they can't pay. Them. If we can keep them happy. I think we can get our budget passed. And I think, and I think it's some step in the right direction for me personally. I think it is. So you have a motion for what now? Just that the Grimm County Schools will pay the principal payment by 2015. I so move. I second. Motion by Mr. Mill, second by Mr. Gallagher, that we will pay the principal payment on the Colmont bond, May of 2015. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, okay, now Ms. Campbell. Just a couple of quick things. Uh, we are going to begin the collaborative conferencing again Monday afternoon. Look forward to that. And also on Monday night during Dr. Dickerson's uh, strategic plan presentation, he was talking about the evaluation of the teachers and the uh, differentiated pay, and we were just curious when the teachers may even expect that to start. Um, it's a zero. It's a. Uh, it's not just a one-step process. We've about completed now all the processes, and we're hoping to have that in the October paycheck. But I cannot promise you that. Uh, but we're trying to clean up some little areas that we have uh, simply because maybe some uh, evaluations were not completely entered and things like that. But we're, we're looking to do that. Thank you. Okay, public comments. Ms. Brown. Um, I am Judy Brown and I'm currently president elect of the local Rotary Club. Um, you should have had a letter in your packet from our club. We uh, we are interested in building and maintaining a positive relationship with the school board in terms of you'll be seeing some of us at the board meetings because we want to be aware of what's going on in the community and on occasion we might want to make you aware of some of the things that we have happening in our little 
bailiwick. Um, specifically what we're asking, and I understand that you're not going to give any answers here, but we are interested right now in having the use of this building, and this discussion was enlightening to me on March the 6th, and my immediate concern in asking that, and I spoke to Mr. Ruling back in July on this issue, uh, we would like to have the Harlem ambassadors back again. Indeed, we have contracted with them, and we are hoping that we can have it here. And having had a year's experience, be a little bit more streamlined and do it a little bit better than it was done uh, last year, work out some of the bugs, so to speak. But uh, and having said all of that, I want to assure you that every penny that was realized from last this previous March, as well as anything that comes from the next March, goes back into the community in terms of local projects. We have a number of them that don't match with us, the engineering programs and various other things. Uh, upcoming this month, the uh, Books from Birth bus is going to be at Tracy City Elementary for a presentation there. We are strongly pushing for people to read to their children, read often and read early because it helps to form their brains and increase their potential in terms of education. Uh, one of our biggest projects, and Mr. Gates may be well aware of this, our current major project is in conjunction with the city of Colmont, is to work on Phipps Park and make another place in the county where kids can go to play. Part of that, not all of that, part of that will be made compliant with the American Disabilities Act. And then next year, when I am president, we would like to go for round two on that part and expand it further. Um, I said all of that to assure you that the things that we are about are things that are positive and are good for the community. And we're just asking for the use of this building and asking for communication with you. As a matter of fact, our president this year had asked me if I could get email addresses for each of the board so that he could occasionally send you an email communicate. So this is where we are, and as soon as you can, we would like to have a reply on can we have the use of the building on March the 6th, and can we get email addresses so that we can communicate freely with you. Um, I like email better than telephones myself, unless it's necessary. Thank you for listening. Well, thank you, Ms. Brandon. We'll, we'll have that Harlem Ambassador game on the agenda in October. And uh, we'll vote on that and get you an answer. And we'll get you the uh, email address as well. One thing is, if we're going to have to change our date, the sooner we can do it, the better. The closer it gets to March, the more limited our options become. Thank you. And we thank you for all the program does for Grand yes, Canada. It is a, a great all honor. All the, vote. All the services you all provide are to help this county in more ways than I can describe. And we're very grateful for the service role that Thank you. I will share that with the club next Tuesday and next week. Anyone else? Ms. Bell. I'll come up. So you can hear me a little bit better. I'll move up here. Um, I do want to introduce you. I, I am Wanda Bell, and I am a retired Grundy County High School teacher, biology teacher. Currently, I serve as Ag in the Classroom representative for Grundy County. And I'm here mainly just to tell you all that um, there is some a little bit of misunderstanding about what the Grundy County Outdoor Classroom is and what it's about. And you've received a letter like this in your packet, which explains some of the history of the outdoor classroom and what its function is. And I just want to answer any questions that you might have. I know you've tabled the discussion about uh, the playground, and we do believe it is a worthwhile project, and we do want to work with you all about this, but we would like to explain that the Grady County uh, Outdoor Classroom is not a Farm Bureau organization thing at all. The Farm Bureau women did use the Outdoor Classroom this week, and we thank you all for allowing that to happen. We had a close to 300 students and guests and visitors there yesterday for very worthwhile meetings and the students learned a lot about agriculture and education in Grundy County. But that's not the only thing that the outdoor classroom has done in the past. I know some of you are concerned about how it's being used now and I do know that the current uh, 
schedule for the high school does not make it as conducive for the students to get to the outdoor classroom during the day. But it doesn't mean it cannot be used for educational purposes and has been in the past. In the back of the room, if you have time before you leave tonight, I brought some scrapbooks and notebooks and some posters of things that have been developed. We actually have a statewide curriculum guide for using the outdoor classroom. Craig Kimbrough is here with me. He is with UT Extension Service, and he and I have worked closely together over the years in developing uh, educational uses for the outdoor classroom. So you have something that you should be very proud of in Grand County. A lot of counties wish they had an outdoor classroom like we have here. It's the largest in the state, if you want to know the truth. And before y'all consider just whatever you want to do with it, you might want to think about, this was an article in the Tennessee Conservationist featuring Grundy County's outdoor classroom a few years ago. And I want you to see this. And there's also uh, some articles from things we've had summer science camps there. We've had, in the most recently, the uh, Freshman Academy and for the summer used the outdoor classroom. So it is still being used. And I know some of you don't think it has been. And this was an article that came out in the current Tennessee Conservationist that came out this month about an elementary school that has an outdoor curriculum that they use for their students and it helps them improve their scores. Listen, getting out of the outdoor classroom has potential. A writing assignment, all of you are stressing writing. If you can get the students to think outside the normal classroom and go out and hear the birds and listen and see the trees, they get a whole different perspective. And the students who came, a lot of times write us letters thanking us. So there's another writing opportunity that students have when they visit the outdoor classroom. And it's for any student, any classroom in the county to use at any time. It's not just limited to the high school. It's for every you know, student, more, teachers who want to bring their students to the outdoor classroom. And some of you were there yesterday. Some of you may want to tell the school board that we're just here to answer questions. And I know my three minutes is probably up and Craig came up to support me. If you all have any questions about what we're doing there or what it's all about, please ask. And, and if you can include us when you start deciding what you want to do about the outdoor classroom in the future, we have spent lots of time, hours, labor, and money. There has been lots of grant money awarded to the outdoor classroom to develop it to where it is today. I have a scrapbook of where it started in 1998. And why it looks like it does today is because of a lot of groups that have worked long hours over there and labor to develop it to what it is today. And I just want you to think about that before you make a lot of decisions about what it means have any questions for Craig or myself or Craig you want to say anything else no. but anything else you want to add to or ask us about the outdoor classroom I wish I'd go visit it sometime it's an awesome place to see it really is and you should be very proud that Grand County has a facility available for students to use now how it's getting used right now I don't know I'm not sure either but I do, I do think it's a wonderful opportunity for students in the classroom. So thank you. And be sure to look at some of these things if you have time before you leave. Thanks. Any other public comments? Yeah. I extend a thank you to you, for your support for the bus driver and that policy. Uh, you don't know how much that means to them and know that they've got your support and y'all are behind them. And for me, I want to thank you for your support because it uh, makes my job a lot easier and it sure makes their a lot easier. I just want to say thank you. Motion to second. All in favor?